Hello everybody and in this video tutorial I am gonna be talking about the must learn Linux commands as a beginner. If you want to get started with one of the best operating systems that is Linux then you must learn the commands that are needed to learn to run Linux. As because Linux is not a graphical user interface operating system though it does support GUI to some extent but still you need to learn the commands because most of the stuff done in Linux are through commands. So in this video, I am going to be introducing you to some important Linux commands that are must learn as a beginner. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So here I am, this is my Ubuntu desktop and in Linux as I told you that you, you need to remember commands to do all your stuff. So there is something called terminal and that lets you type in all the commands and and it simply executes by over there so it's similar to the command prompt that you have in your windows operating system as this one but you don't use command prompt too much in windows because in windows most of the stuff is done using the using gui that is you right click on the file and then copy it and paste it somewhere paste it somewhere else then delete it etc etc but in Linux, you can do that using the GUI as well, but as well as you can do that using the terminal. Now, how to access the terminal? There are two methods, two easy methods to access the terminal. So first up is that you go to dash and type in here terminal. and you have to just wait for it and here as you can see this is the terminal you can access it like this or the easy and the popular way to access the terminal is right clicking on the desktop and then selecting open terminal and the terminal window will open now all the commands that I'll tell you today will be I'll type it over here and I'll show you the the reasons behind why why you need to use those commands etc etc so the first command that i would like to mention here is ls which stands for listings now when you press ls and type in enter when you press and when you press enter here you will get to see a lot of things here you can see as a desktop downloads music public etc now you are probably wondering that this is written in white and this is written in blue why is that so actually whatever is written in blue is a folder and whatever is written in white is a file now what this command ls does is basically lets you list the contents in that directory or the folder in, your, in which you are working on for example I want to travel to the downloads directory now I can easily do that by going to the file manager uh, come on open up yeah and then selecting downloads and here as I don't have anything in the downloads folder but I can do that using the GUI or else if I want to go using the terminal I can simply type in cd which stands for change directory space downloads and when I press enter I am in the downloads directory now how how can you confirm in which directory you are you can simply confirm that by seeing whatever is written before this dollar sign like for example I'm here is written downloads so I am in the downloads directory you can also confirm that by typing in pwd which stands for present working directory and when you press enter and here it says that home then the username which is my name itself and the folder in which I am working that is downloads. Now let's suppose you have a terminal somewhat like this and it's filled up with it's completely jammed and you want a clear terminal. Now most people, most beginners, if they don't know, they'll probably close the terminal and again open it. Now it, it becomes quite annoying to do that same stuff again and again. 
so what you can do is type in clear and press an enter and you will get a clear terminal so that it does not become a bit junky like the previous one now as you can still see that I am in the downloads directory now if I want to move back to my root directory what I'll simply type is cd space dot dot and when I press enter and I am in the previous directory as I said you can confirm that by typing pwd which stands for present working directory and when I press enter and as I as you can see I am in the home slash Drujuti directory previously I there was a slash downloads over here but now it's no more there okay as I told you that ls command lets you uh, shows you all the files and folders present in a certain directory there is another command which is similar to this and it goes like this ls space dash al now when you press enter you are given a screen with a lot of details now what does all this stand for here it's here it shows all the files in the directory when I simply type in ls you only see the files that are visible that are not hidden so these are not hidden but when I type in ls space dash al I'll get all the files that are hidden as well along with the ones that are not hidden so as you can see here it's desktop which is not hidden but these files are hidden whatever starts with a period symbol or popularly known as the dot is a hidden file and here you can as you can see all the files now I'll show you what all these things mean actually this is these are the file permissions if you know that X stands for executable R for read W for write etc this is the user who created it that is the root user and then this is also the username the size in kilobytes the date in which it was created and the time time is always shown in 24 hours format and these are the commands or the names of the files not the commands actually so let me just go ahead and clear the screen The next command that I'd like to show you is named as cat. Now it's not the cat that you have in your house. This cat command lets you concatenate, concatenate and create files, that is text files actually. For example, uh, let me just travel to my desktop directory. Now here I am in desktop. As you can see I don't have any files in desktop you can easily see that I don't have any files in my whole desktop so what this cat command does is lets you create files text files so if I want to create a text file uh, I'll have to type in cat space the greater than sign space the file name suppose I am naming it test1 and then I have to press enter and as you can see the file has appeared on the desktop now you have to simply type in the content like for example I am typing in please subscribe my channel and once done press an enter and then press control C and the and the contents will be added to view the contents simply type in cat space the file name test1 you don't have to put the greater than sign as you did previously the greater than sign is only used when you want to create a file or you want to edit changes in a file when when I press enter and uh, you can see the contents of the file please subscribe my channel whatever I wrote over here you can also confirm that by type ju by just opening this test file over here so I'll wait for it to open 
I'm running it in a virtual machine so it will be a bit slow so you can see please subscribe my channel let's go close it let's create another file cat greater than test 2 and when I press enter I'll have to write in the content so I'll write in say please like and share my videos then I'll press ctrl C and as you can see the two files are present now let's suppose Um, I want to add more contents to my this test one file I want to add more contents to this file how can I do that using the terminal so you have to just type in cat space double more than sign and then that file name which is test one and when I press enter you will by default it does not show you whatever contents are present in that file previously you simply have to type in the extra contents that you want Let, uh, let's suppose I'm typing in my name is Dhruvo Jyoti De and let's press enter and control C and when I want to view the changes that I made in that file I'll just simply type in cat space test1 and as you can see the con extra contents have been added and if you don't put the if you by mistake put a single uh, greater than sign then the previous content will be deleted like for example I am showing you another one say I, if I type in cat space that file name itself test1 and oops greater than test one and and as you can see I have put only a single greater than sign and let's add more contents to it um, let's what I can I I am a computer geek control C and now when I view that file as you can see the contents have been deleted but the new content has been written and the previous content has been deleted as you can see over here it says previously it was please subscribe my channel and my name is Rubujuti De and in in the same file now it has been changed to only I am a computer geek you can verify that over here let's open it as you can see the file contents have been changed now let's suppose I want to concatenate these two files the test1 and the test2 file how can I do that so I'll type in cat space file name 1 space file name 2 which will be outputted to file name 3 let's press enter and as you can see the test 3 has appeared let's open it and as you can see the two con the contents of both the files have been concatenated as you can see it's it says that I am a computer geek please like and share my videos and here in the terminal as you can see the content of test 2 was please like and share my videos I can just let me just move this here here you can see the contents of the test one file I am a computer geek the contents of the test two file please like and share my videos and the contents of the test three file which says I am a computer geek and please like my and subscribe my videos share my videos sorry so as you can see the two contents have been added 
into one file let me just delete these ones okay as you can see I have these three files in the desktop directory I have told you that ls lets you list the contents in the directory so let's suppose I want to delete these files how can I do that you can either do that by using the GUI or by using the terminal when you use the GUI you just have to right click on the file and just select move to trash this is this option and it will move the file to trash trash is similar to the recycle bin of windows as you can see the file is over here and if you select empty this file will be permanently deleted let me just select empty and it will ask you empty trash so that file is come permanently deleted now how can I do the same using the terminal in term while using the terminal the file that you will delete will not move to trash it will be permanently deleted directly so if I type in and to do that I have to type in rm space the file name that I want to delete say test 2 and when I press enter and as you can see the file has gone and I am presented with a clean terminal if you get an error that means the file has not been deleted or some error has taken place but most probably you are not going to get an error so let me just go ahead and clear the screen so that's how you create a text file now let's suppose you want to make a folder right over here in the desktop directory how can you do that to do that you have to type in mkdir and space the file the folder name that you want to create suppose I want to name the folder as my name D H R U P A J Y O T I and when I press enter as you can see a new folder has been created and to move to that folder I have to simply type in CD space and I am in that folder let's create a file over here oops hello everyone and when I'll move to that file let's show you here here as you can see I am in that folder and here is the file the file that I had created you can also view it over here cat space the file name and here as you can see the file contents let me just delete that one okay let's suppose you want to delete this folder now how can you do that to delete a folder using the terminal you have to make sure that everything inside that folder is first deleted and then only you can delete that folder if I suppose let's say okay let's travel into that directory once again and let's create a file at the contents Oops. control C cat so now if I simply go and go back to my previous directory that is in the desktop directory and if I want to delete this directory I have to use the command rmdir and space the folder name d h r u b a j y o t i <coughs> and when I press enter it will give me an error 
it says rmdir failed to remove thrubojuthi directory not empty you have to first delete each and every file inside that folder so let me just now if you feel irritated by typing in the same command once again and again and again you can just simply press the up arrow key and you will get all the commands that you have typed in earlier like say i am i want to type this command once again so i have to just press the up arrow key and get that command press enter and it will be executed so let's list the contents i have this file i want to i have to first delete it rm and the file has been deleted you can confirm that ls no file okay cd space dot dot now i want to remove this file remove this directory sorry I have to just I have to type in rmdir which stands for remove directory space the name of the directory oops I didn't forget to yes now when I press enter I am presented with a error free terminal that means it does it has been deleted you can confirm that by seeing that there is there was the folder right over here and now it's not present the next is the top command now this what this top command does is basically lets you it basically shows you all the running processes in your linux system and simply type in top and press enter and it will show you a screen with a lot of details first up is the PID which stands for process ID every process in Linux has a certain ID you have a certain ID in your country similarly a certain process in your Linux system has a certain ID like for example the user who, who is using that process the PR is the priority, the priority of a process. NI is the niceness, its value uh, ranges from minus 20 to 19. The niceness value determines what the priority of the process will be. Basically, they are related, but they don't have a um, direct relation with each other. VIRT is the virtual memory used. RES is the physical memory used, SHR is the shared memory used, S is the status where you can see these are all S. Now you are probably wondering what these will be. As you can see this S here stands for sleep. This process is basically stopped or sleep is basically sleeping and the R that you can that you see over here is basically highlighted this process mainly means that this it is running either in the foreground or in the background and as you can see this this is sleeping but still my Firefox, Firefox browser is on so the percentage of CPU that the process is consuming the percentage of memory that the process is consuming basically the RAM that the process is consuming the time for which it is running and the command of that process so let's suppose I want to close the Firefox browser this is my Firefox browser running over here you can easily close that by clicking on this close button on the top left hand corner but I'll show you how you can do that using the terminal but for that you need the process ID how can you get the process ID as I told you you can easily get the process ID by the top command but there is an easy easy way to get the process ID of a certain process in Linux to get the process ID of a certain process in Linux you have to just type in PID of space suppose Firefox 
and press enter and here you get a value this is the process id of firefox you can confirm that by typing top and press enter and let's search for firefox over here is it present is it present okay it's not let's type the command once again I'll probably get it yeah as you can see over here firefox and the process id is 20023 you can confirm as i as i had told you pid of firefox is 2023 and here also it is showing 2023 so to terminate the process using the terminal you can you have to type in kill space the process id 2023 and press an enter and you can see that the firefox browser has been closed so that's how you terminate or stop a process using the terminal the last command that I would like to show here is sudo apt get what this command does is lets you install softwares in your Linux system let's suppose I want to install the VLC media player in my system how can I do that I have to type in sudo apt get app dash get install vlc and press enter sudo will ask you for the password now what is the password the password is the user password let's just type in the password press and enter if the password is correct it will run the process now it says that after this operation 120 MB of additional disk, disk space will be used that means 120 MB of extra space will be used if you press in Y over here and if you press Y and press enter the pro uh, download and the installation will start simultaneously but for now I'm not going to download this file so I'll pre press N and press enter as you can see I've got the answer that is about it or about the easy and the popular way to install softwares in Ubuntu or most Linux distributions is by going to the software center here as you can see this a type this is the software center just click on it I'll wait for it to open Now here you can see the software that Linux has that you can get for Linux and just in the search bar type in VLC or the name of the software that you want to download and just wait for it. My internet is a bit slow so yeah. As you can see VLC media player or VLC this is the non free version and this is the free version I think so if you simply press enter uh, install the the package will be installed in your Linux system so that's how you actually that so those are the Linux commands that are a must learn for beginners I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please stay tuned for more video tutorials and please subscribe my channel to get more video tutorials. Thank you.